It is Wednesday, October 20th. On today's show, there is a real sense of urgency this morning from Team Biden to get an agreement done before he flies the coop and heads out for this big climate summit. Last night at a meeting, he said, I got to go. I got to show these guys something when I fly to Europe. What do we have? But you won't believe what Democrats actually just cut out of this stimulus package. And Americans are starting to hoard products again and prices continue to rise. You've been ready for that. Now Procter & Gamble is sending another price warning. And pharmaceutical companies are putting profits over everything else. I know that's shocking. And you won't believe actually how much money they're sending to mainstream media networks like every commercial break. Ready to get uncomfortable? I'm a little uncomfortable this morning. You think? Morning Invest starts right now. And we got a show. All right. We're welcome here. in the Morning Invest. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. Um, and uh, we've got a big show lined up for you today. So let's dive into it today and waste no more time on this. I want to start this morning with the stimulus plan uh, because we got some pretty big news overnight from Democrats on the stimulus plan. Uh, and it's not good. So uh, we, we have a number of different reasons why this is not good. Let's start with the, 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 the front line on this, which is that President Biden yesterday had a big meeting with Democrats. And um, at that meeting, um, basically, President uh, Biden said, I'm going to Europe for this big climate summit. I need something. And you're all Democrats. I don't know if you know this, but we are in power right now. So where are we at? And one of the agreements that came out of this is that we are not going to have community college anymore. Community college is now going to be slashed. And also out of this meeting, we learned that uh, Senator Joe Manchin saying, I am not going to go above $1.5 trillion. You guys can go back and forth all you want. I am not going above $1.5 trillion. And this is the guy now who is just drawing lines in the sand left and right. And Democrats are kind of dancing like, oh, OK, we'll go there. We'll go there. Um, also, something that was on the chopping block is the childhood tax credit. Originally, that was supposed to expire this year. And then the president was giving hints that like, we're going to keep that in perpetuity. Seems to be working out pretty good. Now they're saying we'll just keep it going another year and then maybe people will forget. I don't think this is something anyone is going to forget about. It is. It has been a reliable source of income that people are getting to support the children in this in this country. And uh, I think it, it, we thought it was something that they would fight for as just like minimum standard of care for the next generation. It is not. That seems to be something that they're going to give on. So all these things that Democrats campaigned on saying that they were a hard line against these things, these social packages for a basic standard of education and living, they seem no longer to be. Yeah, it's uh, pretty remarkable that, you know, you have these meetings between Senator Bernie Sanders and, and Joe Manchin yesterday and Eric Wasson, who's the uh, political reporter for Bloomberg News, says uh, Sanders and Manchin meeting again on reconciliation. Manchin says he's still at the one point five trillion dollar top line, lower than the one point nine trillion dollar floor the progressives have talked about. Uh, it's interesting all of this spin that's coming out of this situation, because look at Jen Psaki's response yesterday at the White House press briefing it says after a day of constructive meetings, the president is more confident this evening about the path forward to delivering for the American people on strong, sustained economic growth that benefits everyone. The discussions focused around a shared commitment to the care economy, ensuring that working families have more breathing room, addressing the climate crisis and investing in industries of the future. It almost sounds like we're listening to uh, like a 1950s tel uh, commercial. Like the lady in the Epcot ball. Right. Investing in the future. Progress here in 1950s America. The, dis the discussions focused around a shared commitment to the care economy and addressing the climate crisis and investing in industries of the future so that we can compete globally. There was broad agreement that there is urgency in moving forward over the next several days and that this window for finalizing a package is closing. Yeah, you think so? You think it's closing? Uh, when, you know, and, and look, you, I, you have a guy like Joe Manchin who is winning at every turn in this in this situation right now. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable how how much he is controlling this narrative. Uh, and I have to say, it's really disgusting. You know, you're going to get rid of two years of community college. I mean, 
that was a pillar of President Biden, even standing up in front of that town hall, that woman that we played the video of the other day. Of yesterday, right. So he's saying, you know, private for-profit college, it's going to continue to be expensive. If you're dumb enough to get your own debt too high, you're going to have to pay it off. But I think we do have to offer community college to all students. And that was his rebuttal. So like this is three steps backwards, right? On the campaign trail, he said, I want to reprieve student debt and I want students to have free community college. Now that we've been through the pandemic and he's had massive spending packages passed, but not with any of those promises. He's saying, actually, I'm not for the debt reprieval. You took on this debt. You signed on the dotted line. That's on you. Right. And, but I am for the free college. And now he's going one step back and saying, not actually for the free. That can go. That's that's on. A, and I understand as a politician, you have to like put things on both sides of the scales and see what needs to come off of it so that you can even them up. Everybody has to make choices. I get that. Right. But what what is not coming off the scale are things that continue to benefit biz, big business and hurt the middle class and below. Right. Exactly. And President Biden, though, you talk about a scale. I always think of the scale as like what Republicans are willing to give and what Democrats are willing to give. And the bottom line is, is that it's both Democrats on the scale. Republicans are like at their beach house. But know, like they still out. keep like weighing down the scale with their demands. Right. And so then nobody wins. Right. Here's and what, so here's how political paints it this morning, says Dems edge closer to ditching disarray. Right. So now they're ditching disarray. They couldn't agree, but they're coming to an agreement on something that's garbage, quite honestly. They're going to get rid of the climate provisions. I mean, they're going to cut out the electric car climate provisions in this bill. And President Biden is flying to a climate summit. In Europe, no, which has already, most European nations have already committed to this. So now you're going to show up like the guy who just doesn't do his homework in class to like, you're doing group work here. You got to do your job, guy. Like, right. And you, you promised, you said a lot of, you know, he was very bullish on the economy. Again, we're, we're not, we're barely a year past the election. And so we remember yeah we have like a, my daughter a, says mommy i remember things yeah, like, you, don't have to, you don't have to pretend like i don't remember this i yeah. remember this stuff i remember and i also remember progressives holding a hard line on this uh you guys remember in the chat um you know uh, holding a hard line on this right progressives are like look we're not we're not signing anything unless there's a climate provision in here we're going to make sure that climate is taken care of we want medicare that's another big piece that's also on the chopping block this morning bernie sanders of course want pushing very hard to get this this uh uh, hearing um, as well as well as dental um, as well as uh, uh, vision care and that's also perhaps uh, potentially on the chopping block because Manchin doesn't want to help people <laughs> I mean on Medicare front we just can't afford it he says but progressives yesterday were at the White House they had this meeting at the White House so the progressive caucus comes out Pramaya Jayapal comes out and goes to the microphone and talks about this meeting. And here's what she had to say. I, I was I was really, I have to say, disheartened by this response and the sort of the spin and the, the kissing of the butt, like the kissing of the ring of President Biden. Listen. He talked to you about any deadlines that he wants, if it's not October 31st, which of course the House Speaker has said. The president is the inspirer. He is the closer. He is the convincer, the mediator, he, he, the mediator in chief. He really is doing a phenomenal job. But to follow up on and that, what about did deadlines? He tell, did he talk about deadlines? I mean, I think we we're trying to get this, you know, trying to get to a, a, a real close as quickly as possible. What's the so follow up? Did he get frustrated with what's going on? Is he taking a tougher stance? Is he basically saying, "Get this done"? The president has been nothing but respectful of all that we're trying to accomplish, all that he's trying to accomplish in his Build Back Better agenda. And these conversations have been really great. They're really conversational. Others oh, they're should say how they feel about this, but really conversational, really important listening sessions for him to hear from our members and for us to hear from him. Okay. They're, they're conversational. I like conversational meetings. 
Okay, but if you're the big, this big, the closer, the Jerry Maguire of the room who right. can like work the living room, then you should be getting what you want, what's important to you, right? right. If you're the negotiator in chief, you're the closer, that's a great point. Like you're the one, this is your agenda. This is Biden's agenda. Then you don't agenda. have to sacrifice. This is not Manchin's agenda. And yet he is running the show uh, and he is totally, I mean, he has absolutely totally fallen over backwards uh, for, for Joe Manchin. Yes. Oh, I thought you were pushing play on something else. I did, I did, but uh, it didn't come through. So I I went, (laughs) re. Yes, excellent point coming out of this microphone. That that one worked at least. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. Uh, All right. Well, again, these are just like feelings about the, the, these are rumblings coming out of the negotiations. We still don't actually know. We haven't seen anything to read. So hopefully um, this turns around into something that actually shows that uh, there is a war on poverty. (laughs) Doesn't seem like it. Seems like we're fine with the amount of poverty we've got. That's all right. We're concerned about big business being in poverty, but the rest... (laughs) really that's not really that's that's not funny that's the oh, wrong sorry. sound I, bite. I hit the wrong button on that one and i think the right sound bite is hulk smash do we have that well no just... i wait i gotta get hulk smash but okay. you know bottom line on all of this they're close to an agreement uh but it's going to be a crappy agreement that's why i gave it a little thumbs down here in my uh Seems in our graphic. like it biden stimulus cut in half slashed in half and a lot of the big programs that could really elevate Americans out of poverty uh, also on the chopping block thanks to Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin way to go and by the way we haven't we still don't even know where we're coming down on the salt deductions right the state and local tax deductions that's still no. up in the air yes um, and we also don't know about social security and we don't have a finalized uh, number yet on Medicaid the salt deduction should be a totally like that should be a done deal, right? Accountants mm-hmm. called the SALT deductions the penalty for voting for Trump deductions, right? Because right. it meant that you could no longer deduct your high levels of property taxes or state taxes in where you live against your federal taxes. Um, and only the states that voted blue were penalized by that. The red states were not, by and large. And so this is something that Biden should want to take an eraser or two based on his own political affiliations why would this stay right if it stayed what would it show i mean i'm not sure i i don't know how how you would even answer for that right well wealthy people i mean you know you've got this you got this wealthy caucus that's pulling for rich people and making sure that they can get these mansion deductions wealthy democrats absolutely want this to disappear it absolutely it it would shock me there would be no real rational explanation for why it would not So let us know your thoughts on the latest on the stimulus news. Where do you come down on this? What should we do about Joe Manchin? Can you get on the phone and call your congressman and demand that they support some of these provisions? That's one thing you could do. Yes. Uh, we, we saw the story earlier this week on how basically Americans are uneducated when it comes to even what's in this stimulus plan. They've only been hearing about certain elements of it, climate particularly, but they haven't been hearing about anything else. They haven't been hearing about the Medicaid provisions because the mainstream media has been ignoring it. So there's a lot of people that just don't know what's in there. Now, you know, you can get on the phone, call your local congressperson today, leave a message at their office and demand that these things be included in this bill. Give them the pressure. That is how. And Jonathan says he's going to be on the phone today. Good. Get on the phone. Call. It takes two minutes to get on the phone and leave them a message and let them know where you stand on this to support the larger package and some of these provisions. That's how we get change in this country. All right, we've got more news to get to here on the show on this uh, Wednesday, October 20th, our anniversary day. Yes, yes it I is. Can, I can't believe how long we've we been married. 11 years. Holy smokes. Five hours and 20 seconds. <laughs> Counting the moments. Uh, yes. Every moment's precious. So right after this show, we're actually going to be spending the afternoon uh, just uh, hanging out without the kids and just going and have a nice afternoon. Yeah, so. we always go to Indian food whenever we get away from the kids. Well, like, some good spicy Indian yeah, food. Yeah, some spicy food. Can't wait. So it is our anniversary, and it also is a day for us to tell you about Blue Chew. And maybe I, maybe they should go hand in hand, if you know what I mean. Blue Chew. Subtle, honey. Exactly. Just so you know, I'm not a sure thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, Blue Chew 
is a fantastic option for those of you who want a little excitement in your life and you know need that extra confidence the little confidence boost uh in you know in the bedroom so to speak um, and what i love about this is that they will send this right to your front door Blue Chew will send it right to your front door in easy to open packages so you're not fumbling around with this. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The process is simple. You go to bluechew.com, you consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you're going to receive their prescription within days. So the best part, it's all done online, no visits to the doctor's office, nothing like that. Um, it's uh, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. They're made in the USA, prepared and shipped direct to your door in a, in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from a little extra confidence in the bedroom, it's time to perform. Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. You can try it for free. Are you kidding me? When you use our promo code INVEST. Promo code INVEST. All you need to do is just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Use promo code INVEST to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And by the way, they sent a little they sent a little uh, sample pack here. I am afraid. To me. And, you know, it is, it is my anniversary today. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> blushing. <laughs> Can we get a close up of that blushing? Uh, Walter, thank you so much, Walter, for that three hundred dollar super chat. That wow. is incredibly kind That's of you. That's an Walter. anniversary. Good. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, Clayton. Oh, all right, I'll do calm it yourself. I'll do it later. No, I, it's going to be a happy anniversary if you know what I mean. Spicy indeed. Spicy with that Indian food, among other things. All right enough of our personal lives on this show. Let's talk about other pharmaceutical companies. Uh, let's talk about Pfizer today. Uh, must we? Okay. Yes, New we reports must. reports leaked that Pfizer has made some very questionable agreements with certain governments as it distributes its COVID vaccine. Specifically, they had um, made agreements about non-disclosures that are interesting there were some agreements about distribution around various wealthy countries that were interesting uh diff what what else um well also that sales for pfizer could double in 2022 <laughs> like that, yes yeah, okay so again all of this these contracts i read through one of these contracts it was like two uh, it was like 200 pages long um, I, David, I don't know. I think I sent it to you like a few months ago. Did you happen to read that Pfizer contract? You go through it with the government and you I realize, did, unbelievable, how much they basically stretch these governments. They basically, they get, let me just say this. If you and I were to have a negotiation with somebody. Yes. And like one side of this contract was, it was like literally being walked on. Is, is what this is. The governments just get walked on in these contracts. Yes. And yeah. Pfizer, Pfizer gets everything. They right want. to silence, right to decide who just, who donates what, right? right. So uh, you can't just go donating your vaccines to a country that might need it if Pfizer has the opportunity to price gouge said country, right? Like, right. They can make no. money. They can make money off of, uh, oh, you know, here's a country like Sudan, which doesn't even have like clean drinking water. Um, you but, cannot donate there unless they decide uh, because if there's an opportunity for them to price gauge Sudan, they're going to take it. Um, they also, they secured the IP waiver. Now, you may remember that people were pushing the government to open the patent for the COVID vaccine so that any pharmaceutical company could make them so that it would open access to any anywhere around the world. Anywhere there's a pharmaceutical factory, that vaccine could be made. Uh, Pfizer is saying they strong our governments into saying no. So even when uh, Joe Biden has said we are considering this, but it seems that he cannot. Did he not know that? Or did he just say that because it you sounded can't. like a fun thing to say? I mean, yeah, it's like, well, I'm, we're going to do this. And meanwhile, oh, we're you, considering it, we're, right? We're considering it. But when actually you look at the contract, no, you're not allowed to. You will be doing no such thing, Joe Biden. So don't pay that any lip service. I mean, it's amazing. Public Citizen found these contracts, like including not only secrecy, but also language to block donations of Pfizer doses. Disputes are settled in secret arbitration. 
meetings, so you can't even go public court with this. Like if right. you have an issue, you got to go into a, a into arbitration. Uh, Pfizer is able to change the terms of key decisions at any time. By the way, that was a big red thing. I, I uh, by the way, I appropriately I read this Pfizer contract while I was on the toilet. Okay. Seems right. I didn't need to know that. Um, no, and I was going through it, and I, and, I, and and I was sitting there, and I was just like, I'm, I'm just kept going. I couldn't believe it. it I should have used it as uh, it was the perfect place for me to have read it because it was total garbage. Um, I just felt like Americans are just walked on by these pharmaceutical companies, like delivery dates, like the the companies, like, hey, you're going to pay us all this money, and we have the choice basically to never deliver a vaccine to you. Yes. You're going to pay us all this money. And in our contract, we don't have to ever do anything. Which is what, you know, I'm thinking back to right before the vaccine got approval for not emergency use, but um, for emergency use. Yes. When the vaccines were approved for emergency use, there was all of this, you know, media around how like, the National Guard is ready to deliver these vaccines. It's the highest security. It's, you know, this was when Trump was still president um, and we've been like ready to launch and it was militarized, right? Mm -hmm. As if the United States was really like the one in charge. And I realize now that that was propaganda made to make us think that our government was ready to protect us with these vaccines and roll it out. But really they were just... They didn't have the power to do this. They had some power to distribute. And that was, it was just, they were a supply chain, right? But not decision makers, really. Right. Sharon, hey, Craig, you're going to hear an echo when I when talk. I talk but did you get, did you that, get video that video I sent you yesterday? You yesterday with the uh, I did. Yeah, I did. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, though. We don't hear an echo. I don't hear an echo. I don't hear an echo either. People are saying, oh, David's quiet. But we were having this whole audio issue. And David thought when he came in and we were getting a mix minus double audio thing here. But, uh. You may speak. They'll, they'll, they'll hear, hear it. it. Oh, okay. Do you think they'll hear it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Becky hears it. Oh, okay. So I didn't watch this yet, but it, that was you, the. You should, you should, should that, that would pale into, into, into the story, story right, right now. now. You, you should, should play, it. play it. Oh, I don't have it to play. Shoot. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't have it handy to stick in the rundown. Damn it. Um, Do you oh, want to? I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Synopsis. Bring us into this inside. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I know exactly what he's talking about. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant it was like an interview. I, I'm sorry. Yes, it was. It was actually the next thing on my rundown. Um, so you know, uh, and I kind of we kind of teased it at the beginning of the show is that if you watch mainstream media television at any point in your day, God forbid if you do, but if you do, you flip on your CNNs, your Foxes, your whatever, you're going to often see a flip on broadcast television, right? Like Good Morning America, any of these things. You're going to see the pharmaceutical companies throwing so much money at these mainstream media companies so that they can advertise. When mm -hmm. you When you watch these commercial breaks, they're always drugs, aren't they? They're always drug companies yes. advertising. They know that audience. And so uh, someone put together this montage of just how much money Pfizer spends on mainstream media and wonder why we don't hear dissenting voices in the mainstream media about Pfizer and any kind of any of these vaccines. Um, it's remarkable. I wonder why. Just follow the money. Watch this. This is a montage of Pfizer ads on television. Good Morning America is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference, brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight, brought to you by Pfizer. Early start, brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett, out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press. Data download. Brought to you by Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. <laughs> Interesting. So when Pfizer comes knocking to our show, we're going to tell him to hit the hay. No way. Someone, by the way, says, uh, Sweet Vintage TV says, I think Clayton's microphone needs a blue chew, by the way. Yeah, I got to tighten this thing. It keeps, it, <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps going limp on me. I need a blue chew. 
Blue Chew and my microphone. Oh, for goodness But isn't sakes. that a crazy, I mean, I, I, I guess I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't say that, I shouldn't think that it's crazy because it, that's how these television stations are on the air. I mean, that's how they're making their money, right? That's yeah. how all of those, that's why you don't see these dissenting voices. That's why everything you see on these mainstream media stations is all just like gobbledygook. It's all just like regurgitated corporate talking points, isn't it? Right. And I mean, we, you and I, we worked in the news for several years in New York City. So we know how these segments are produced. And it's like someone has, you know, there's a, there's a senior producer. Mm -hmm. Um, or an executive producer, and they have an idea of what the overarching theme of the show will be, and they green light segment. Yes, 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 yes. And then that goes down to a senior, and that goes down to a different producer, a segment producer. And the segment producer has in mind already the talking points that they want someone to say. And then they call up a list of their blue book, someone from their blue book, who will, in fact, say those things, right? And they sort of fit those things in. And you and I have gone through these segments before with producers who are like, well, this, and they're like, but really this, right? We want you to say this. Um, This is just how it works. They already have an agenda that they, and that's why every now and again, you'll get someone who will like go off script and that video goes viral because you can tell the news anchors like, you're saying that. Right. But wow. I thought you were going to say something else. That this wasn't is in how our it notes. works. You're going to say that on television? No, you can't say that. And so there absolutely is a way that these segments are produced with an overarching thing. No, no senior, no executive producer is going to green light a segment about how Pfizer is dirty. One, because there's an agenda to, you know, push for vaccinations um, for for a reason. Right. And anybody who wants to speak out in any I mean, it's just it's gotten to the point where you can't say anything reasonable that would indicate some reason for hesitancy about a vaccine, period. It just won't make it to the show. Right. It won't be greenlit. It won't be put in. And then if anybody says something like that on the air for television stations who follow this agenda, right? There are other stations who are very anti-vaccine and they're going to get people to say something. Their their blue book looks different. Um, They won't get put on the air or they'll get pulled off the air. It's just, this is how it works. Yeah, it's really, really sad. So, hey, this segment is not brought to you by Pfizer. This segment was uh, brought to you by... uh Clayton and Natalie on our anniversary day. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on that. In the You're really community. milking this anniversary day. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about it. That's nice, honey. I'm happy about it. He treats it like a real holiday. It is. It's like, when do I get the presents? Presents. No, we're going out for dinner. We get, get a to- babysitter. That's right. All right. We got more news to get to here on the show, um, including uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, let's see what's on the rundown. Hoarding. We're, yeah. we're going to talk about price hoarding next because Procter and Gamble is warning that prices of its products are going to go up. You already felt that, but it confirmed it in the weekly uh, in the third quarter earnings call this week. They're saying we are going to start charging more for all consumer products not just your laundry detergent or your razors, your oral care, but also they're going to start charging for staples, things they consider staples like toilet paper and diapers, which is why I used cloth diapers. Everybody consider that. It's an awesome option. And a way to save money, yeah. Yes, and save the environment. Uh, did you know that each baby can, contributes up to a ton of gro- of um, waste in the landfill with diapers? It's disgusting. Uh, one ton? One ton of garbage per baby butt. Yes. But we actually used cloth diapers for all three of our kids. We used the same stash and my niece and nephew used them too. You know what's amazing? That's an aside. Is that it what used to be seen as, I I only learned this because I'm reading uh, Stephen King. Every October, I like to read a Stephen King book. That's my tradition, as you know, if you watch this show for any length of time. And the one that I'm reading right now is Mr. Mercedes. I have never read it. So this is the first in a trilogy that I'm reading. No spoilers, please. Don't tell me. Um, But I'm thoroughly enjoying it. But it was written, I think, in the early 2000s thousands or roughly a little bit uh, somewhere in there um and he makes the point because he, he meets a woman uh, in, in line for this job fair uh at one point and this woman um it has no money and she's there with her baby at like three in the morning and he can't believe that she has a baby there at three in the morning at this job fair and he notices that she has cloth diapers and he's like oh she can't afford diapers and it's amazing that like a hundred years ago, everyone used yeah. cloth diapers and it was way better for the environment. And actually uh, the diaper companies such as Procter & Gamble, they sponsor research from child psychologists to say that it's better for children to just wait till they're ready. 
And so which that's why garbage. now they make diapers up to size seven, which basically I can wear. Like they, they just ca- keep getting bigger and bigger. And actually America is the country in the developed world that potty trains the latest. No other country potty trains this late. And in fact, in most countries that are the poorer the country, the earlier they train because they cannot afford diapers up to four years yeah, old. I love those commercials. They just like, don't do it. Here are the new, uh, here are the new, uh, ha- uh, what are they called? Hampers? No, hampers. Pampers. Pampers. Here are the new Pampers cruisers. When you're you're 10 years old, just pull them on like pants and yes. go to work. And so these, this research that like, oh, they just weren't ready, right? That does not exist in other countries. Right. In England, they, tre- they train by one. They're already just, here's your first birthday cake. Here's your chonies. Like right. you just, they just do, right? And Chilies. kids understand, especially when they wear cloth diapers, they can feel it. It doesn't wick the wetness away. So they're like, that doesn't feel good. And then they start putting that in the potty. So Becky, um, I did not need to go into that, that still drinks, drinks milk. milk. I think, at, at, yeah, at, like it, we're like, we drink milk beyond like one year old. Like we yeah. like buy gallons of milk, which is so weird. Yeah. Becky Medved says, I used to cloth diaper all four of my kids. Way Good to for go. You. Yeah, and then not to mention the fact that the government does not allow a certain chemical in tampons, but it does still allow it in baby diapers. Um, and so once you really start to research diapers, I mean, it's not fun, cloth diapering, but I really appreciated that, like the effort that it took to, I did not mind it. I used pocket diapers. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. And, 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 you know, just putting them in a, in a, in a, in a sack when you're done with it and then it goes in the wash, you know, it's not terrible and just clean it off. And with the diaper, it's sprayer. just like folding towels. And when you're, wa- anyway, you know, this anyhow. is a whole sidebar tangent, but it, it does say like, what, how, what a disposable nation we are, right? We rely on all of these like Procter and Gamble products that are considered essential, like what, diapers are considered essential or? Well, for a lot of people it, it is, if you don't have access, you need to, to a washing machine or a diaper, diaper service is expensive. We never did that, right? And also you have to pay up front. So I probably paid $300 for my stash of cloth diapers, mm. but then they lasted me three kids plus my sister used them right. for her too, right? So that is a great investment, but you have to put it out front and a lot of people can't, but then they actually are spending about $7,000 more over the life of the baby um, because they trained for so long. So yes, this it's a this is what's considered a staple and people will eventually they will right now start to pay more for it because they have no choice which means which will lead to what hoarding right right and also choosing the cheaper item you're not going to choose the pampers you're going to choose the cheaper walmart brand which has more chemicals in it, right? I wound her up. So people are hoarding. Yes. You mentioned people are hoarding. Don't say diapers around me. I really get mad yeah. about it. Uh, supply chain issues, of course. So all of these ports. There was a report this morning that these supply that these these cargo uh, containers are being dropped in people's yards because they don't have room for them. Like in Long Beach, they're literally dropping them in people's private yards because they're running out of space. Does that mean you can it. use it? Like, yay, free like, toilet ooh, paper. Free, yeah, here's some, here's some laundry detergent and Halloween costumes that I've been waiting for. Uh, But people are hoarding, according to reports this morning. Food shortages are the next supply chain crunch. In Denver, this uh, piece in Bloomberg writes, public school children are facing shortages of milk. In Chicago, a local market is running out of canned goods and boxed items. Uh, But there's plenty of plenty of food. There's just always not enough processing and transportation capacity to meet the rising demand. So isn't this interesting? The things that we're decrying right now are things that we shouldn't even be drinking. Yes. I mean, that's mostly the case, right? Milk, Canned like, goods. How about a nice serving of bisphenol with your flaylates, beans, you right? know, like you, we shouldn't be eating canned goods and we should. So this is, I think, indicative of a larger problem, right? Like if we, if we used like local farms, we had our own gardens, we actually went out and, and grew some lettuce in our own backyard. Yes. But this doesn't help anybody right now, right? Well, but the, what Neither saying, does hoarding. Yeah. Well, what are they hoarding for then? There's not enough, there's plenty of food. People are just, for whatever reason, deciding that they need to stock up on it. And they're worried that the supply chain problem is going to continue into years ahead. Yes. And there's, I think we have a flexibility issue too. Like people decide that they're Jif over Skippy, right? And then, oh my gosh, if that's out, I cannot be flexible, right? right? There's this sort of idea that the American consumer is not adaptable. 
Um, and and th this seems to be the case, right? This seems to be bearing out if people are so afraid to not be able to get their branded cola or branded syrup, then they're going to hoard it, right? And so th this is causing an economy of scale that, that now the price of those things is going up. Uh, Tricius999 in our chat says the limits on buying products are back in Colorado. Tricius over on Twitch, I'm curious what products specifically you're being told you can't buy. Is it toilet paper again? Um, in How would you say this word? Uh, this person's screen name Inquitous is... Inquitious Prime? Inquitious Prime? Iniquish? Iniquitous? Iniqui I, I don't know. Anyway, it says that 90% trucker turnover rate equals not enough truck drivers. Yeah, yes. the truck drivers also... Uh, Pretty, pretty bad as well. Um, really, really bad. And now we're learning that President Biden is secretly considering right now weighing, weighing to bring the National Guard in to help with the supply chain backlog right now. Really, this is how concerned we are about making sure that we're getting these goods out of China into our homes, is that the White House is considering getting the National Guard to go in and to try to move some of these things along here. The thing that bothers me about that, though, is some of these are goods that will expire, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we once were in Walmart and Clayton picked up some ground beef and he's like, from China? <laughs> Ground right. beef from China, right? So that stuff is consumable. It needs to get off of that truck so it can make, make it well, to- Well, I should mention that that, that, uh, that Walmart beef you're talking about, I use this as an example quite a bit, I had heard that at Walmart that they would they would take beef from different parts of the world and put it into one ground beef package. So I looked at this. I said, I got to see if this is true. Um, and I think I read it in Michael Pollan's book about, you know, yeah. trying to source local food instead of this supply chain craziness. And I looked on the package and sure enough, China was one place like a quarter of the ground beef was from Venezuela was another part. And then some was like from Latin America or from America. So imagine the green, the carbon footprint of having to bring over beef from China, then like Venezuela, and then the United States, and then to send it somewhere where then it's packaged together as one hamburger. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah, that's gross. Ugh. So, but if that is being done, in fact, still, then those things need to come off the truck. So whatever it takes to right. not have, I mean, you don't want things spoiling, right? Because right. it's already got a, foot, a carbon footprint on it. It might as well actually go into a human body. Yeah, we've got more news to get to here on the show. We're going to tell you what's trending in just a minute. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Why Billy Joel is trending this morning, one of my favorite singers of all time. He is. We'll talk about that. Uh, and we're going to talk about these companies, these big corporations that are just making tons of money by polluting uh, and making sure that we all get sick. So we'll talk about that. But first. Okay, first we're going to tell you about our show sponsor. Uh, do you know, Clayton, that ransomware is a problem? Yes. <laughs> and it continues to be a problem. In fact, recently we reported that the Biden administration had a large summit with leaders around the world because they are so concerned about ransomware because the hackers get smarter and we need to get smarter too. So we thank our show sponsor, Ignite. That's uh, E G N. N-Y-T-E. They are a security company that will help you control the data systems inside of your small business or large business, however it would it may be. For instance, if you're the type of company that doesn't have a lot of money to hire a large IT department, but has the same needs as everybody else. In fact, hackers are now going after small businesses as well as large businesses because there's profit there. In fact, there is data that shows that it, on average, it takes 23 days to recover cover a data disruption. So if someone gets into your system, you can't get it back for that long. Plus it's expensive. Uh, millions and millions of dollars are being paid out to ransomware. So Ignite works behind the scenes. It helps you with your shareable data. For instance, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, DocuSign, Salesforce. It can keep all of that company data safe in a file system that has ransomware detection. So you still can share your documents with each other, but you will not have to uh, do it in an unsecure way where you're worried about your, your customer data. Um, that also customer data being leaked can earn you a lawsuit. That's expensive, not to mention the downtime in your company. So head on ever, over to ignite.com and uh, make sure that you are checking out the solutions that can make your system more 
secure. So learn about how Ignite can protect your business from ransomware and see why Ignite is rated number one for data security by real customers in the G2 crowd. You can start a free trial today. That's E-G-N-Y-T-E dot com. Thanks so much, Ignite, for keeping us safe. Thank you so much. All right, we've got more news to get to today, including what's next on the rundown. We want to talk about corporations. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. I think yours as well. These companies that make uh, profits hand over fist uh, and they make profits hand over human where they get to like walk all over human beings in the process. It drives me nuts. No much, uh, so much, no much. What am I trying to say here? What are you trying to say here? No more so. That's what I was trying to say. No more so than when these companies hurt, um, families that can't have no means of protecting themselves. They don't, they can't hire fancy lawyers. Mm -hmm. They can't find, you know, hire these $10,000 lawyers to say that, Hey, my drinking water is filled with methane or that my child is dying of cancer because you poured something in our waterway. They don't have this money. And then they just, they basically suffer in private. So stuff. we've been reporting on the newsletter, which is morninginvest.com. Hopefully you've been reading it. There have been big research studies lately that talk about these forever chemicals. These are like flalates, bisphenol. They're called PFAS, P- forever chemicals is what I'm going to call them. Um, for the cool kids, PFAS, yes, forever chemicals. And they are basically manufactured into things that we buy in the store. So for instance, uh, they're in a bottle that your shampoo is in. They're in the salad dressing as a preservative or as a sealant to keep that in there. They're in your makeup, they're in your personal care, they're in your oral care, right? So now the Environmental Protection Agency, which is a government agency, has a plan to get rid of these forever toxins. Just kidding. They have no such plan. They have announced a plan to measure them. Uh, They don't have any plan to ask any manufacturing company to remove them. So what are they saying? They're saying that they will, quote, subdivide the thousands of PFAS compounds based on their toxicity. So they're going to make us a list, which is so nice, um, based on their chemical structure, based on the techniques used to remove them from the environment. Then they're going to identify the gaps in these research. And then in some cases, they're going to ask that these companies voluntarily stop making them or uh, come up with a solution to take them out of the environment. It's voluntary. So far, no company has actually taken them up on doing that. And people who are actually harmed by these chemicals, which, by the way, is all of us, but people who are really suffering from, say, birth defects, right? Um, Other loss of life type things. These are the like Aaron Brockovich stories of the world, right? You grew a third arm. This is bad stuff. It is happening. Are saying, this is not enough. We don't need a white paper from you. We need you to come up with a solution saying, hey, Procter & Gamble, you can't put that tampon chemical in a baby diaper. Maybe that's why we have infrared fertility. Hey, Procter and Gamble, we don't need flaylates in baby bottles or salad dressings. Or here's, here's an example. Um, while we live in Europe, I have tried to learn to can, right? Mm -hmm. I like to get these glass jars and I put them in a submersion can, uh, canning device. And I, I preserve, say, all the tomatoes that I've grown Mm -hmm. or the cabbage or what have you. Um, And in America, we use ball jars. That's B-A-L-L. And they have that like sealant jar and you screw it on and then it vacuum seals. Well, those jars are lined with bisphenol for whatever reason. And so I look to see like what what can I buy here to jar my tomato sauce? You cannot buy ball jars in Europe because they are lined with bisphenol. But in America, you absolutely can. Grow your own food, it's healthy, and then line it with bisphenol. Right? Why is that not allowed here, and it is allowed in America? Capitalism, I do not understand. Baby. You know what, you know, I wanna, I, you know, if I wanna have my uh, light bulbs that uh, cause problems, if I wanna have my chemicals that can line my ball jar and give my kids cancer, it's my American right. Well, you know, I hear an echo, but, but. Sodium, sodium and benzoate is a, is a preservative, preservative in, in, in foods here, here but, it's, but illegal it's illegal in the, in the Europe. Europe. I mean, there's a whole laundry list of, of chemicals that are not allowed in Europe. And, you know, the, the thing is, so my R- sister-in-law. Round, Roundup? 
Roundup? Like that was Roundup is made in Germany, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah and it's not bought by Bayer. But now right. Bayer was like, you know what? We're tired of all the bad publicity around Roundup, so we're ending it. Right. <laughs> like we're and you know, it. when I was becoming a new mom, that was all about BPA free. Like get mm-hmm. the BPA free stuff, right? But that just means that there's no bisphenol A, but the plastic company has replaced it with bisphenol S. And so that's a marketing scheme. You still should just be using no plastic because plastics are a synthetic that leach chemicals into whatever it is you're drinking from. Um, It's pretty terrible. And so my sister-in-law illustrated this beautifully. She, uh, she's a, she's a vegetarian and she was trying to educate her mother, my mother-in-law on why she thinks you shouldn't eat meat. Right. And so she, and her and her, my mother-in-law said, well, honey, if it was that dangerous, the government wouldn't allow it. And her and I just were like, what? <laughs> we can't. So that's the attitude none of us can have, that the right. government will protect us by not allowing things. Have you right? seen our food like, pyramid in the United States? Yeah. Like our food pyramid was written and built basically by corporations. And, you know? and you know, to no discredit to my mother-in-law, that's just something that the government tells us to think. Like, we will protect you. We won't, you know, we won't allow you to buy marijuana see we're protecting you we won't allow you to i I don't know like they're not that's phallus that's phallus that's That's uh, fatuous is what i'm it's not it's not phallic it's fatuous phallus what are you thinking about on this anniversary day stop clayton stop i'm not doing any shows with you anymore on our anniversary (laughs) you're too you're not subtle the subtlety is gone Sad trombone. Um, drink that water. You're going to need it. Um, so this is fresh water. <laughs> At least fresh water you've got. And this is glass. Yeah. And well, a lot of people across America don't have fresh water, unfortunately. Um, we obviously been talking about the Flint water case, right? Here's just another example of, of state governments and, and corporations just doing what they want and uh, covering things up. And these poor people end up drinking lead water and getting cancer and all kinds of other developmental issues as a result of it. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Well, we've got news this morning uh, about Flint. There's an update on Flint. You thought, oh, hey, you know what? It's great. They probably cleaned up Flint, Michigan, right? They probably cleaned up these waterways and taking care of things. Ah, no. Here's Jordan Sheraton. We know it, Jordan. Remember how the corporate media has been pushing that lie, the lie that Flint's water is now safe? for years without actually reporting in Flint or speaking with residents there? Well, Legionnaire's disease is a deadly waterborne bacterial disease, which is now broken out in Flint. Oh my God. So now these disease numbers of Legionnaire's disease are running rampant through, uh, is it Genesee County? Um, the number of Legionnaire's disease cases in the country, county this year has already higher than it was recorded all of last year and has matched the number of cases reported in 2019. Oh, bless them, the people who live there. You can't, you have no recourse to protect your baby you know just as a mom thinking about these people who cannot move and cannot ensure that their babies have safe baths yeah they're handing out bottled water last week in another county in michigan you know they're saying hey don't drink the water it's okay though for you to take a shower in it and wash your hands that's what they were telling people i mean you your skin absorbs toxins as you pointed out last week on the show your skin is the largest organ in the body yes so we, and you have pores i don't know if you've ever looked at a face but there's pores on your skin that's why you get pimples so why in the world would you take a shower in this toxic chemical but you just shouldn't drink it though when just you have no choice right God. that's when you do what what my grandma called a pta bath is you know, uh, pits, the T word and the A word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not going to PTA bath. <laughs> PTA You're like, Grandma, did you take a bath today? I did a PTA. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I Grandma. mean, but Grandma was dirty. No. Grandma had um, clean parts. <laughs> God. You know? Oh. Okay. We're yeah. not going to talk about it. Anyway, uh, yeah. 
So that's the update on what's happening with these corporations. Uh, again, unbelievable. And uh, that's why we bring it here, because you won't see these stories in the mainstream media. They will not cover these stories. And we will continue to bring these stories to you because we are not bought and sold by people like Pfizer and big uh, and big corporations. Uh, Kathy tells me about using a different type of or using ball jars, but sanitizing them in a certain way to minimize the chemical impact on her food, which is awesome. Um, I use WEC jars, which do not have any lining at all. So you might want to look into that. That's W-E-C-K. That also is available in the U.S. And um, it worked. So I'd never done it before was very exciting. I made a chili the, today that I had preserved the tomato sauce and it went when I pulled out that little. That's so exciting. That's so satisfying. So exciting. Yeah, All right. We're going to tell you what's exciting on the internet by telling you what's trending. This is the segment where we run down the things that are popular and trending on Twitter and Google and tell you why in case you want to jump into the conversation. You absolutely should. Uh, Billy Joel is trending because it is the 44th anniversary of his album, The Stranger. And Twitter was kind enough to remember and say this was a brilliant piece of work. We loved it 44 years later. One of my favorite albums. The singer also has his own Sirius XM channel that just launched through November 2nd. And people are pretty excited about that too. Billy Joel, I love, I've seen him in concert a couple of times. I got a chance to see him uh, at a big concert on the River of Dreams tour in Philadelphia. And then I got to see him in at the University of Pittsburgh on campus. Actually it was at Carnegie Mellon, that's where the event was, but next door. And he did a, it was called A Night of Stories and Music with Billy Joel. Yeah. And it was in a small theater. And he would just play some songs and then talk about them and then just kind of sit stories to, storyteller style and then yeah. jump up at the piano. And, and he would take questions from the audience. People could ask him questions. One girl like raised her hand. She's like, can I play scenes from an Italian restaurant with you on stage? And he was like, he wasn't set up for it. And he's like, ah, and all the kids, you know, in the yeah. audience were like, do it, do it. And so she got up and played it and he sang it and it was the highlight of the night. That's sure. cute. It was cool. Yeah, fun. Anyway, cool. Um, and then that always launches the Billy Joel versus Elton John debate on Twitter, which also, because they're like, the same genre, one's British, one's... So that also raged in. You're free to bring in in the chat which one you prefer if you are a one or the other type person. In and out is trending because the chain in San Francisco was closed when the city found that it was not enforcing vaccine proof to enter and purchase from the restaurant. In response to this, the chain says, quote, we refuse to become the vaccination police for any government. We fiercely disagree with the government dictate that forces a private company to discriminate against customers who choose to patronize their business. Uh, so they got a slap on the hand and they gave a middle finger back. <laughs> And um, it is fun to watch that conversation on Twitter. I like In-N-Out. Yes, I do too. Their fries are not good, but uh, the burgers are great. Yeah, their burgers are good. And I really like the lemonade. Okay, Facebook, no, sorry. The Facebook is trending on news that Facebook could change its name soon. The word is that Mark Zuck will make an announcement on October 28th, and he wants the new company name to reflect his goal to create a multiverse. The Facebook is trending because of course that was the original name of the social network and online people are mostly poking fun at this. Yeah, they want to change like they want to change the brand of Facebook. So I think they're trying to do this because it's like Amway, you know? Like, oh, you're not going to try to sell me Amway. And so they just changed the name of Amway to what something is it? else. Amway? You're like, door, What's uh, the new Amway? No, no. Uh, they, they changed it at one point to Fortunate You, I think. And then they changed it to something else. Does anyone know? And then I think they went back to Amway or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, I think back it's back to Amway, to Amway now. now. Is oh. It? They went, it came all full circle. I guess they felt like 30 years had passed. People won't remember it from the early 80s. What's the difference between Amway and Herbalife? They're not the same thing? Herbalife makes that fake uh, stuff. That, Don't say uh, that. People are going to. Uh, you, you know, you, well, you can watch a whole documentary about herb, okay. herbal life, but they make the the drinks that you, whatever, like powdered stuff. I thought stuff. Amway also, oh, but they also do cleaning products and stuff, right? Yeah, I think. Amway was like multi-level marketing, right? So you could sell like They're both products. multi-level marketing, I believe. Anyway, this has nothing to do yeah, with are, the, the Facebook. The yeah. Facebook is but maybe he, will be something cooler. Yeah, they're going to come up with a rebrand. So you, you're like, oh, it's called Tic Tike. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm on. <laughs> have you guys started using Tic Tike? It's blue and white, and it's kind of familiar. I can't quite put my fingers on it. Like, where did where yeah. did this come from? 
Okay, uh, this one I put in for Clayton. Kate Beckinsale is trending because she, ad- this is the stupidest thing, because she admitted she was hospitalized for a back injury that happened when she was putting on a pair of leggings. Aww. Over 100,000 people searched this up just to know, like, how did Kate Beckinsale get hurt? She okay? Oh, it's because, yeah, she seems to be just fine now. Okay. Just from putting on the leggings. Got to watch that, Kate. Yeah, you got to be careful. I was, I was so, so in love, in love with her. With her. <laughs> She's Clayton's fantasy girl, too. Yeah. Kate, I, I saw this pop up in the drive today. Like and the you're photos. Like, I was like, oh, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. Okay. And Oleg Deripaska is trending. This is the Russian oil tycoon, tycoon who had connections with the Trump organization and the Trump campaign. His DC home was searched by the FBI and apparently his New York City home too. This guy? Yes, that's him. Do you mind if I go that back to Kate, Be- Kate Beckinsale? I mind. It's just not about... Kate Beckinsale at all. Okay, it's about this guy? It's about this guy, sorry. We have to look at him. Okay. Now, look at him. Okay. Um, Where was I? He had been denied visas to enter the U.S., and he was the recipient of sanctions, you may remember, from the Biden administration. The FBI won't say exactly what it was looking for, but this guy has been on their list for a long time. So a raid on his house is interesting. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, obviously it's indicative that they may trying to get be getting closer to Trump. That's why people are so interested in him. Hmm. Interesting. Get This is not, that's not oh, him. Sorry. I, ac- that's him. I, I accidentally hit the button. Again. Okay. She did not have her home rated. She hurt herself with tights. Man. He, he is um, a person of interest by the U S government. <laughs> oh yeah. Everyone <laughs> in the chat's like, I'd rather look at Kate Beckinsale too. <laughs> oh man. That's right. All right, that's all I got for you today. Wow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I meant to. I'm trying to find the applause button. Where's the applause button? Oh, thank you. There thank we go. You very much. Thank you, sir. I loved in Monty Python when they would hit the. They, do you ever watch that in Monty Python, which was one of my favorite shows? And they would. He would say something. He's like, "Coming up next, we've got this guy." And then he would hit it and turn it right off. He's like, okay. And then we've got... (laughs) That's what it's like being next to you right now. Uh, Anyway. All right. That's going to do it for our show. Hey, it's our anniversary. So we're going to... Super chats, shall we? Oh, yeah. Let's look into the super chats. 